Hi everyone, it's Matt Bloomfield at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. Not a lot happened since we last met, has it? Uh, <laughs> coming up in the next hour, have we got some things to bring you. Uh, we'll have uh, representatives from uh, Norway, Poland, Ipswich... Uh, and other places. Wickham, of course, as well. Uh, we'll uh, be reviewing what happened at Adams Park last Saturday, which feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? A fantastic victory over Bolton Wanderers, and reflecting on what happened subsequently as well. The news that Queen's Park Rangers were in talks uh, with our now former manager, uh, and uh, in the coming days, who would know that Gareth Ainsworth will be moving to Loftus Road? Uh, we'll hear from the former boss uh, speaking. It's in strange saying it, doesn't it? Uh, speaking after the game against Bolton, we'll hear uh, an excerpt from his chat uh, along with Richard Dobson as well on Wanderers TV with Phil on the day that he said goodbye to the players at the training grounds. We'll hear from head of media Matt Cecil, who'll uh, talk us through the sort of behind the scenes news from a media point of view we've got our match debrief with Phil as well uh, which will give us more uh, of an insight too, we'll catch up with goalkeeper Max Strick uh, who uh, we've been down to the training ground this afternoon and spoke to him got a, a player's eye view of uh, of what's happened this week and also obviously the good form that he's in, uh, not conceding too many goals, have I mentioned yet we'll speak to the new manager as well, Matt Bloomfield uh, we'll be uh, hearing from him you might remember as a former player and uh, also until very recently the manager of Colchester United as well where he got uh, manager of the month award again all this seems like quite a long time ago now doesn't it later on in the show as well we'll be focusing once again on Wickham Wanderers women we'll chat to Kine Anderson uh, who's uh, over here studying from Norway uh, she's doing physiotherapy over at Brunel at Uxbridge and uh, also starring in midfield for Wickham Wanderers as well uh, also Wickham Wanderers women's Bobby Lynch will be speaking to us too uh, after she made her uh, return for 90 minutes in the cup uh, at the weekend after her uh, long layoff with an ACL uh, injury and look ahead to this Sunday's game as well which has been dedicated to football versus homophobia uh, all that and more possibly uh, on the way in the next hour as well uh, but first <laughs> let's uh, pause for a moment and enjoy some highlights from Saturday at Adams Park Welcome to Adams Park. Wickham Wanderers taking on high flying Bolton Wanderers. The Battle of the Wanderers this afternoon in League One. This is the uh, best game in the division today by quite some margin. Wickham Wanderers and Bolton top of the form table as well. Bolton five wins on the spin, won the last two games 5 0. Wickham Wanderers have won the last four games and are on great form themselves. So who's going to come out on top today or will it be a draw? And they Wickham go out wide to Wheeler on the right hand side. Now Wingy. Wink, it sits up for a cross, it goes in, Vokes! Great save from Trafford, will the rebound be turned in? It won't. Oh, guilt edge opportunity from Sam Vokes. That should be 1 0. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic chance. Grimmer wins his header over Charles. There's another battle that's going to take place between those two. Hanlon, he's beaten the offside trap, Hanlon, he's through on goal. Toll comes across and defends, and Hanlon just loses his feet at a vital moment. And that's really good defending by Owen Toll because he was second favourite there. We kind of felt like it could potentially go that way with both sides in such good form. Often you can be a bit reserved, but GMAC on the run now. Beats one, feeds wing, wings winding one up. Drills it in low, decent strike with three yards wide. And it's when someone just has that little bit of individual brilliance, Jasper, that just creates a little bit of space. Because at the moment, this is two teams cancelling each other out. And you either need a mistake or someone to drop a shoulder here. It's as simple as that, yeah. Honestly, when a game is like this, you're looking for someone who can unlock something for us, who can do a little, use a little bit of their individual brilliance and magic to, to create something. And then at the other end, there is that mistake that can, that can unlock the defences. And then Vokes stops the clearance now and has the ball on the right wing, Vokes. Takes a con- touch the control. Oh, lovely touch from Vokes. Vokes inside the area, feeds it to Wing. Oh, and Wing's little step over from Dempsey nearly works. Go on! Oh, from fully 30 yards, first time shot. Always rising, but it was on target, and the keeper made the save. It looked like it was headed for the roof of the net. Yeah, he caught it really well, didn't he, Josh? I was just thinking, not three. Not three, <laughs> but no, he caught it beautifully, and that's where he is, breaking down the play on the edge of the box, and then he can arrive if need be. But yeah, caught it really, really nicely, and, and unfortunately just, just too straight in the goalkeeper claim. Lewis Wing to take the corner. They go short to Gareth McCleary, corner of the penalty area, left-hand side, back to Wing. Wing goes for goal! Oh, yes! Lewis Wing! And it's another Richard Dobson folder special. Short corner to McCleary. Wing took the ball, faked across, saw the gap, and rifled it into the net. And Trafford looks at the turf 
and the Wicker fans look at the scoreboard and it reads Wicker Wanderers 1, Bolton Wanderers 0. Yeah, look, like we mentioned earlier off the training ground and, and, and Dobbo's little secrets he has up his sleeve uh, and this is absolutely no different, uh, something that we've worked on um, and it drops, they work the corner short, don't we? Hanlon, wriggled away from Mbete, Hanlon cuts it across the face of goal, Sam Bokes! Miscontrolled initially, gets it back and it's saved by the keeper and the referee has signalled an offside oh, and the ball just wouldn't sit for, for Vokes and the keeper was scrambling. What a ball again by Lewis Wing for Brandon Hanlon. It's a fantastic pass. Now Gareth McCleary on the right wing. Vokes is getting in the, in the office now, in the box. Goes in low to Vokes! Hits the side netting. Narrow angle. The low cross came in, it was ricocheted into the path of Sam Vokes who was on it like a flash. And the ball went past the post there. Half a chance again for Wickham. Debar, lovely little flick down to Wing. Wing's got Scullin in space. Scullin, edge of the area. Freeman's in their support. Scullin on the outside. Goes to goal. Great save. Brilliant, brilliant save. Scullin there, nearly, nearly sitting the deal in stoppage time. <laughs> Crikey, what a counter-attack that was. I mean, first of all, you feel like TJ Debar's in behind. There was a bit of a pull from Declan John in there, but he steadies himself. He plays a fantastic little flick inside. And the full-time whistle goes, and it's a magnificent five wins on the bounce for Wickham Wanderers. Bolton Wanderers rolled into town in great form, and they've been derailed by Wickham Wanderers and Lewis Wing, who fired the ball into the roof of the net in first half stoppage time. That was enough for Wickham Wanderers. Brilliant, brilliant result, Jasper. Yeah, what an afternoon here. Speaking to a few of the fans before the game and weren't quite sure what to expect with the form and the goal-scoring form that Bolton have been in recently. But we came here, had a bit of a cagey start. It was difficult to begin with and Bolton found their rhythm. A moment of absolute sheer quality from Lewis Wing at the end of the first half. And then second half, a completely different performance. We were assured in our play. We looked confident and we looked even favourite to go and grab a second goal. And then showed that grit, determination towards the end of the game to see the result out. And what a massive three points that is. We'll leave you with the full-time result here at Adams Park. Wickham Wanderers 1, Bolton Wanderers 0. Match highlights from Saturday at Adams Park against Bolton, uh, brought to you by Jasper Pattenden, who I'm sure much more will be playing, but uh, done an excellent job of summarising. Alongside uh, Phil, of course, uh, our match commentator, head of uh, uh, audio and uh, broadcast at Adams Park, also host of Ringing the Blues, the uh, excellent podcast, of course, and pre-match drills available on Wanderers TV. And uh, we've been up to the training ground uh, this afternoon and uh, been speaking to him about, obviously, what's been a, a roller coaster slash whirlwind of, of, of the last few days but started by reflecting on that result on Saturday Fantastic to beat a rival um, huge game really more than three points it was a six pointer to use the cliche because Wickham were nine points behind with two games in hand they're now six points behind with two games in hand because uh, of that excellent victory um, they set a league one record as well for the club five consecutive victories they've not that, done that before at this level um, and as it turned out it was the final game for, for Gareth Ainsworth after over 10 years so uh, we didn't know that at the time but looking back on it a very poignant performance a very Gareth Ainsworth style performance a win um, which is obviously a fantastic way to sign out but um, it was great to speak to him after the game uh, Gareth congratulations five wins in a row at League One level a club record Wow, uh, I didn't know that. So, well done, boys. Uh, you know, they, they again did everything that we asked. Um, the shape nailed it. You know, nailed it. I had a real tough decision decisions to make. You know, I got Curtis Thompson back, Jason McCarthy, who's been sensational the last two games, TJ Chem. You know, having to leave those out and pick the team I have, it's brilliant, but it's tough. You know, now, but when you get performances like that, you, you know, you justify um, everyone playing in the right positions and, and the positions they're playing in. I thought, again, um, we were secure at the back. Max really didn't have too much to do. He had a, an over kick, I think, was going wide, but then the one on target um, with the boy in the middle there. But, again, you know, we were definitely the aggressors. I think Volksy almost had one at the back stick, header in the first half. You know, um, no, really, really pleased with the way we're playing at the moment. And teams keep underestimating us and thinking with this sort of this, this team, I don't know what they think they are, but um, I was really pleased with the way that... Um, we went about the job today against Bolton. Let's talk about a goal, a goal worthy of winning any game. Yeah, listen, Richard Dobson deserves credit again. Set piece. So what we do is, uh, me and Josh do all the tactics for the game. 
Dobbo does the attacking set pieces and, and tactics and, and Herbal does the defending set pieces. At the moment, everything's clicking, you know. Um, Dobbo saw a weakness there and, uh, and the boys nailed it, you know. Um, they nailed it in training yesterday. I watched it and I thought, you know what, if, that, if that's on, brilliant. And uh, and it was on and, uh, and you know, you've got to credit Dobbo for that. That's the goal that separates the two teams and uh, it's, uh, it's great. You know, we've been together a long time now and trust him a lot um, with everything and uh, like I say I don't really get involved in set pieces I've got, I've got enough on um, but uh, he's uh, he's nailed that one and, and that's the difference today um, as well as the boys sort of just defending with their lives you know Chris Farino Jordan Willis I don't think have played together before Jack Grimmer for everybody is, is okay he's took a whack on his head and, and, and you know we did have to use a concussion substitute for him but um it was uh, and it was worrying, but um, he'll be fine, and I'm sure the result will give him a boost. But um, you know, everyone, uh, CJ come on again, and, and this spark that, at the moment he's carrying with him. So, um, no, really proud of everyone today, and uh, really, uh, really great team, Bolton. Honestly, um, good management, good people, and fantastic fans they brought today. You know, they never stopped. They never stopped singing like they didn't do three years ago when they were on the brink of administration they were singing then they were singing again and it's a North West club it's a big big club and uh, and for us that's a, it's a great scout but again I'll always say never get carried away with uh, with just one win um, I know it's five on the spin now um, and we've got some tough games to come but um, things are looking really good at the moment Seems very strange, doesn't it, hearing from the manager sort of now after after sort of what we know now as well, and and as you say, the, the performance and, and the result really something that he would have been pleased with to, to be sort of going out on. Well, yeah, looking back on it now with hindsight, it was like I said, a very Gareth Ainsworth type performance, um, and you always say leave the club in a better place when you found it. He's left this club in a completely different universe from when the day he walked through the door. Um, so we give him our very best wishes as he's gone down the road to QPR. But um, you know, this season is still very much um, there's so much going on with it um, but yeah it was poignant um, to be here on his final day um, there were lots of tears um, from everyone really um, and um, I don't know I, I've not seen this happen before at any other club but to do an exit interview um, not in a Davina McCall style we didn't say here's your best bits but it was very emotional to sit down with, with Dobbo and Gareth on the sofa and, and just to talk through the decision hardest thing I've ever done at the club you know um yeah, um, real top bunch of guys, you know, and, and can't thank him enough for what they've done for me and and the fans should appreciate them so much because they've uh, they given me an opportunity, um, which which I always you know wanted to try and take, um, but yeah, it's, it's an, a really tough day, a really tough day, and. Uh, I've just told them that they can achieve, they can go on and and, um, and get promoted this season because they're, they're a sensational bunch of lads. Um, but it's not just those down there, it's, it goes back a lot further than that, right to the start when I came here in 2010, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of history here and, and it's a tough day, but um, it's life sometimes and you've got to, you're going to move on. Dobbo, the word pride was used and the immense amount of pride that you both have together but about the shape of this club now compared to when you walked through the door to both of you, the, the pride must be immense. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I've watched, literally watched some of them grow up in my time here. You know, I signed Josh going as a 14-year-old and you look at him now and running games at League One level. Um, he can't not be proud um, about things like that. You know, It's, um, it's wonderful to watch him. Um, I've enjoyed every moment working with them and um, I just wish them all the very best. And the family word as well was used because the atmosphere at Wickham has been your calling card, Gareth, and the family element, the community, the the, the vibe here, that took time to build, didn't it? And yeah, <laughs> you know, the family is what we've been based everything on, the building blocks of everything we've done, you know, we've, we've preached about being together and and uh, and and that that unbuyable that is that family side of things and and you know not just the family I've got here the players my my own family my my children and that you know they've only ever known me at Wickham uh, even though you know Kane and Scarlett were born was a QPR but they um you know they only know me at Wickham and and they've played a huge part in here and and it's going to be a big change you know but um yeah it's uh, it's tough really tough. But um, it is football as well, and you've got to realise sometimes that um, 
you know you you, uh, you take on new challenges there's there's a huge challenge ahead of us now um keeping QPR in, in the championship is is after you know the, the slump of form that they've had we we really want to get our teeth stuck into that challenge I'll hopefully be playing Wickham next year in the championship that'd be give me more pride than ever because of uh, of of these boys and this club you know but um you know, this this will always be a huge part of my life and uh, and, and no one's ever going to take that away uh, you've had your chance to say goodbye to the staff and the players this is your opportunity now to, to speak to the fans because obviously they've been here every single step of that journey too yeah um, can't thank them enough you know we've had we've had support right through you know even at the crazy time of Torquay right through to the, the, the times right now you know they've been w- really with us you know it's uh, it's an amazing football club and uh, to be part of the history is, is incredible I always said it was going to take something really special to uh, to move me away from here you know the, the certain drivers in my life that aren't maybe other people's drivers um, the challenge is huge the, the, the connection I've got with QPR as well is, is big um, and I, I think this club's in a real good hands and I think it's, it's, it's going and, and I'm proud of where it is but to every person who's ever got behind us and sung a song or bought a ticket or celebrated a goal thank you so much from the bottom of my heart you know we couldn't have done it without you um, I've always said that and I always will um, I was the lucky one at the front of it all but um, we've achieved together at Wickham and, uh, and that'll stay with me forever Although. Yeah, the, the the club is the fans. Um, you know, everybody else moves on from time to time. Some t- some longer than others, but um, it, it, yeah, the the club moves on, and uh, the, the fans are their support's unwavering, isn't it? So um, you know, they've they've been unwavering in, in their support for us from the very start, and I can only thank everybody for that. Um, you know, I just wish everybody the very best at the club. I want them to be successful. I want them to carry on the work that we've done. Uh, I'd be devastated if um, if all them years of work suddenly um, go to waste, you know. So I'm a Wickham fan. My kids are, are Wickham fans now, and um, yeah, I just I just want them to, the very best for everybody involved. Well, Gareth Dobbo, on behalf of the fans, everyone at the club, everyone who's been there along the way for it, all of it, for part of it, thank you so much, um, and we'll be watching. Cheers, don't, sure. don't be a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> always a chair boy don't worry about that so listening to that as well it really sort of stands out the connection that he has with the, the club and the, and the players as well yeah I mean he, he ran this place from top to bottom you know his energy has been poured into every single corner of his training ground and, and down at the stadium um, so yeah it's uh, an incredible legacy he leaves um, and Dobbo as well I mean nearly 17 years uh, in various different roles and I can't imagine what Wickham Wanderers would be like without the input of Richard Dobson um, and I don't want to sound dramatic there might not even be a Wickham Wanderers as we know it if it wasn't for him and his contribution here um, so yeah huge legacy for them both um, but now we, we look forwards and, and hopefully onwards and upwards with our new manager It's strange to imagine as well that fans to be sort of less impressed or more impressed I should say with, with, with the replacement it was the ideal choice, wasn't it? And credit to the chairman, Rob Kuhig, because these things are difficult to get done, um, especially at pace and, and other things. Um, and often there's a bit of an interim period um, where there's some uncertainty. Um, there was that period here at Wickham Wanderers. It lasted for about 41 minutes. Um, the players knew that um, the chairman was working behind the scenes uh, to bring the new person in. Uh, I think everyone had a very good idea of who they would like it to be. Uh, and the moment when Matt Bloomfield walked through the door, the, the elation on the players' faces was there for everyone to see. And the energy has just been incredible um, ever since then. And this was all on the same day uh, than, than Gaz and Dobbo leaving. So um, momentum is key in sport. And I think what Rob has done this week and the way he's been able to get the deals done um, has kept up that momentum. And we now go into Saturday um, absolutely buzzing. And such a feeling of optimism throughout the club, you know, with the players, the staff and, and the fans are like, you know, going into this next period now. Yeah, huge. 15 games to go. Wickham in a fantastic place in the, in the league. Um, we've got a guy in charge now who knows the DNA of this place, who knows exactly 
um, the squad. There's a couple of new faces he's got to, got to get to know, and he's brought in uh, uh, Richard Thomas, his assistant. But Lee Harrison, his goalkeeping coach, has come back as well for his third spell. So there's a huge amount of familiarity here. But he's his own man. He's going to want to lay down his own rules and his ways as well. Um, but there's not big change coming. I just think it's going to be keep momentum going. Uh, he'll impose his style on the squad as we go. Um, but you know he commands respect because of who he is and, and what he's done for this club in the past. And if anyone can make the step up, it's Matt Bloomfield. It'll be really interesting to see sort of the type of manager he is as well and, and what he takes from other managers that he's played under at this club. Well, yeah, I mean, it's so much history of this club. And, you know, I know John Gorman was a big influence as well. Gareth, Gary Waddock, I mean, signed by Tony Adams, who was, uh, OK, not a great manager, but a fantastic player. Um, so, yeah, and, and Matt's attitude to, to life and the game has been exemplary throughout um, so he would have absorbed all of the things he needed to absorb from these people. Um, but yeah, like I said, he's his own man, so I'm equally fascinated to see the sort of manager he becomes. And a five-game winning run at uh, the ideal time to sort of take over, really? Yeah, normally when a manager changes, it's because it's not going well. Uh, he went into Colchester in that situation and uh, done fabulously well. He was only there four and a half months, but they were in a right mess when he walked through the door. He leaves them in a much better position. Uh, they're looking a, a lot safer in League Two than they were when he started. Um, and I think it's hugely important for him to have a bit of time away from Wickham Wanderers um, and to kind of cut his teeth and almost prove to himself you know, what it's about making the step up. Um, and I think that four and a half months will be vital when he looks back on his career. And Shrewsbury won't want to be playing a team who's won their last five games or, or will that sort of make them a bit more sort of wanting to end that run? Well, they're a, a good home side. They've been getting good crowds at their place. Um, they recently won six on the bounce themselves. Uh, they've drawn one and lost one. They lost to Accrington Stanley, which was a real surprise. Um, it was a game after Accrington and lost to us. Um, I didn't see that one coming. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, they're normally very tight, competitive games. We lost to them at Adams Park earlier in the season, so uh, we owed them one for that one. But um, they're in eighth, we're in seventh. Um, I think for them to really keep pressure on, on a playoff campaign for themselves, they really need to beat us on Saturday. Uh, um, but with results and games going against Wickham in, in the top six recently, even though we've been winning every week, so has everybody else, but there are teams up the top now who are playing each other this weekend. So I think it's a great opportunity. If we can work to get the three points, we might actually make up some ground on someone. And is there a service station between here and Shrewsbury that you'll be uh, stopping off at? Do you know what? I've not had a chance to look at the map this week. Normally that's the sort of my priority. Uh, but this week we've been a little busy, but I will be sure to go and Google Google Maps now and be like, right, where can we stop? It's going to be lovely, right? It's going to be very rural. Rural. It's, it's, it's from, from Visit Shrewsbury there, from Phil Catchpole. Uh, don't forget as well, on Wanderers TV, you can catch uh, the full interview with uh, Gareth Ainsworth and Richard Dobson as well. And also, uh, you can view their last day at the training ground, which includes some uh, fantastic footage of their uh, final messages to the players. Very emotional as well. Still to come on the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear from Head of Media Matt Cecil in, in more uh, behind-the-scenes news on uh, what's happened this week. And we'll hear from the new manager as well. Online, on Radio Player and on 106. 6.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Still to come on this week's Wickham Wanderers show, uh, we'll be hearing from two members of Wickham Wanderers women's team. I know, a multi buy this week. Uh, very exciting. Uh, but first, uh, we continue. Oh, and we'll hear from the new manager, in case you're listening out for that bit. Uh, but first, uh, we'll catch up with head of media Matt Sessler, also at the training ground this uh, afternoon, to find out a bit about uh, sort of the behind the scenes of uh, what's been uh, quite an eventful few days. Still catching my breath with it all, I think. It's been um, from, what, two days of, of silence, really, from Wickham Wanderers, and then that was obviously enforced when all the, the speculation was going on. There was a lot bubbling beneath the surface, but a lot of that we weren't able to communicate to fans, and, and QPR found themselves in the same position in Colchester as well. So, um, you know, normally on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday, we'd be uh, posting frantically, particularly after such a fantastic win against Bolton. Um, but it was a very different feel around the place on Monday once we knew what was going on. So... Um, yeah, you know, to to kind of be amongst it all um, while things were developing and, and capturing the moments we were able to was, uh, you know, a real kind of privilege and a unique experience, both for myself and Phil. And then all of a sudden, once the button was launched at, at five o'clock on Tuesday, wasn't it, to announce that Gareth was leaving us, that Matt was returning, um, just sparked, you know, in, incredible reactions, outpourings of emotions, uh, and that's just in the in the media office here. Um, but, you know, across the World Wide Web and, and seeing video clips going viral, fans responding in different ways. And, and above all, what I think is amazing is and, and so heartwarming is that the response 
has been so positive and, and lovely. You know, we've we've lost a club legend too, really, with Gareth and, and Richard Dobson leaving, and um, you know that could have uh, triggered a, a huge outpouring of grief and and dismay amongst the Wickham fans. But actually, when coupled with the news that Matt Bloomfield's returning, it feels like there's continuity. Like. Uh, you know, we, we, we're going to be okay. We're going to be more than okay. So uh, it's been a really enjoyable few days in a strange way. Really sad to see, t you know, close friends go. They're not just colleagues or, uh, you know, a manager and assistant, but people we've got to know really, really closely and, and ro ridden the roller coaster with. Um, but at the same time, we've got Matt Bloomfield back. It's a new era. Um, and it's, I think it's galvanised the fans, um, you know, from periods of uncertainty early in the week to now really wanting to kick on to Saturday. This isn't supposed to be a pun, but it's, it's come out of the blue, hasn't it? And, but you must be so impressed with the, the, the smoothness of it all and how, you know, I imagine other clubs, you know, they have to have an interim manager in position for a while or, you know, they're not, it, it just all happens so, so smoothly and so quickly. Oh, our chairman doesn't mess around, you know. He, uh, he asks us to do things and he wants them done an hour ago. It's, um, you know, that, that's, that's the way he is and it's brilliant. He brings a real drive and energy to the place. But above all, he's had a plan. He's had this structure in place, this idea that, look, Gareth's a hugely talented manager at some point a sensible chairman somewhere is going to recognise that and make him an offer to, to prize him away. So Rob's been ready for this moment for a long time. Uh, he acted smoothly, very quickly, um, very professionally, and, and I think that's really come out of it. The dealings with QPR and with Colchester have been done really, really well, really efficiently and professionally. Um, and it was all unravelling over the weekend, you know, hand on heart. When I said goodbye to Gareth on Saturday, uh, I didn't know this was in the offing. I think he conducted himself brilliantly throughout the day. Um, you know, there, there was no kind of sentiment. He didn't want to distract from from what was going on. Um, you know, with that game on, uh, against Bolton, and uh, as things unravelled over the weekend, obviously we were made aware of it late Sunday into Monday, um, and that's where we get to get to action. So, uh, yeah, no, brilliant. You know, for the chairman and, and Gareth set the tone for this place, and uh, I think the whole series of events was brilliant and, uh, and handled really, really well. Oh, really nice for you and fellows we spoke to you to reflect on you know the sort of ten years that you've had working so closely with with them as well. Yeah, yeah, it was Gareth who persuaded me to come back to the club in 2014, and uh, I was offered a job to head up the media department, and I was quite happy and settled in the job that I was doing elsewhere at the time. But Gareth spoke to me at a friendly and said, "You know what? Something special is building here, Matt. I think you should come back. You should take the job and be amongst it." Um, and he's been an unbelievable manager to work with. Um, just a real inspiration. You come to the training ground, you hear him before you see him. The big whoops and the cheers, and the uh, you know the the air guitar comes out, and it, it gives you a, a zest for life and uh, you know real energy. It, me and Phil have had a huge privilege working alongside him and uh, being there at his you know at, at this club's greatest moments in its history. Really, um, you know some some difficult periods as well, and and uh, you know we've, we've got to know a lot of mutual friends and shared friends and you know we've been to Bill Turnbull's funeral with Gareth you know it was a really poignant day um, so yeah look Gareth's been an amazing guy and uh, you know it was odd seeing him being interviewed at QPR earlier on the TV we'll have to get used to that but uh, you know equally brilliant to see Matt Bloomfield walking in this room with a beaming smile on his face to meet all of you guys and uh, and kick off what will be a, a long succession of uh, interviews with your good self. That must be so nice as well to, to have that familiarity with the new manager as well. Yeah, look, Matt and I go back way longer than Gareth and I do. Um, Matt, I was telling somebody earlier, Matt was the very first footballer to to come up to me at the very start of my media career and he approached me after a game and I was a little bit unnerved why a player was coming over and he asked about an article I'd written on the website. I said, yep, that was me and I thought I'd put my foot in it or spelt something wrong and he said, you know what, you've made my mum cry with pride. Um, what you said were really kind words and thank you very much. And that stuck with me, really. Um, you know, a footballer coming across and being appreciative for something that I'd done. So, uh, you know, we developed a close friendship. Um, he was the one constant at Wickham Wanderers during a, a huge period of change, really, towards the, the end of that decade and into the new one. We've just grown ever closer, stayed in close contact over the last few months while at Colchester. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, great to see him back. But, you know, this, this is a working relationship. Yes, you know, we, we, we're good friends and, and, and always have been. But, um, of course, there's boundaries when we come into it. I'm not going to go prying around what he's doing, uh, you know, as a manager. Um, we're here to give him all the support he needs um, and the team needs um, to be a success. And, and together we will all make it to the championship, I'm sure. Really nice to hear from uh, Matt Sessler and some brilliant behind the scenes insight there as to uh, what you can only imagine has been a, a quite, quite busy uh, few days at the club and the training ground and uh, plenty of plate spinning by the staff uh, in the, the media room uh, which we're in at the time as well and we're fortunate enough to uh, speak to uh, the new manager Matt Bloomfield. 
Yeah, uh, it has been tricky to sum it up because um, it's been a, a real whirlwind. I feel like I've been, in, you know, living in a bit of a haze. The time's not been my own because it's just gone so quickly over these last couple of days. But there's been plenty to do, plenty to sort, and I've, I've sort of loved and negotiated in those two days. But the one day I was looking forward to was today to get in the building and start getting to work. Does it feel a bit like sort of your destiny's come to fruition in a way? Um, no, I think if I'm honest, everyone else was speaking about me and doing this job at some point more than I was myself because um, I knew that there was a lot of work to do to um, get to the point of being op offered this opportunity. Nothing was ever going to be given without lots of hard work and dedication to prepare. So my focus was only ever on, on preparing. Um, and if this opportunity ever presented itself, I wanted to be ready to, to take it. So I'm just, I'm extremely pleased and probably extremely fortunate as well at the same time of the timing that I'd already been away to Colchester and got myself a little bit of experience. So when the call came from Rob, I felt um, ready to take it. How have you found the transition from player to coach to now manager? Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting, um, you know, um, journey and, and process. Um, obviously, I was, I was extremely fortunate to come out of my playing days and straight into the coach's office here at Wickham Wanderers. But... Um, Rob was um, very keen and thought it was a good idea for me to go elsewhere to get some managerial experience. I thought, I think, and he, he was exactly right. Obviously, I was, I wasn't ever too keen to leave Wickham Wanderers because I, I loved my life here and I and I really enjoyed what I was part of. But the decision to go to Colchester was 100% um, the right one, and I'm really pleased that I took that because, you know, without that experience um, and without the last few months of, of doing the job there, then maybe I wouldn't have been sat here in front of you now. So I'm really pleased I did that, and I think it stands me in real good stead to, to move forward here. And really nice as well that you won't have to sort of get to know the players or you know assess their strengths or weaknesses or you know know how the team is doing or even you know know where the, the ground is. Yeah, exactly. I think there's there's so many things that feel comfortable about coming back. Of course, um, you know I know the players inside out. I know them um, close. You know both performance wise and, and psychosocially. I know I know you know a lot about them. So that will hopefully give me a, a slight leg up and make it the settling in process slightly quicker. But at the same time, um, you know, I've been away for five months. The team's always evolving. There's a couple of new players in the door, and I need to make sure that I, you know, pay due diligence to all of that stuff. Because, um, you know, and whilst it is coming back to a club I know very well, it's a different role, and um, you know, I need to make sure that I, I approach that in the right way. Will you be looking to sort of put your own style of, of football in, into the into the team? Um, I think that um, the team's playing really, really well um, with the style of football they're playing. I think there's a lot made of the style of football we've played here over many years and I'm not sure it's always been entirely fair. So, um, you know, it's going to be, um, you know, it, it isn't broke, so there's no reason to change anything. Um, the boys are playing extremely well. I want them to carry that on. I want to try and help facilitate that. Of course, I'm not going to try and... Um, uh, imitate anybody else and try and, and, and be you know Gareth Ainsworth because um, I need to be authentic to myself and, and be myself but at the same time I, I love and respect the work that he's done here over many years and, and I'm just hoping that I can and carry that on and carry it forward. Does it feel in a way a strange time to be taking over at this point in the season obviously the team's doing so well and going for the playoffs? Yeah, most certainly so because you know I've obviously spent many years here with, with the gaffer being being the manager and um, being one of the players and the coaching staff, you know the situation I walked into at Colchester was extremely different in terms of you know where they were challenging at what end of the table. So, again, a new experience and and doing this coming in with you know the games left that we have, it's it's not a long spell until the end of the season. So it's really exciting for everyone around us. Um, but for me, I have to take the emotion out of it and make sure we we get the processes in place every day to to help the team keep moving forward. So what have you said to the players ahead of Saturday? I spoke to him this morning about um, I thought that it needed to be um, whilst it is coming back to a place I know so well and, and love it's 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 a job that I've got in hand and I, and I felt like it, it needed to be started as such um, so we've spoken about that we've done our prep on on Shrewsbury I've managed to find some time to watch them this week and Sam Grace has done that um, in the building as well so we've we've been speaking this morning and we've presented to the players so nothing's going to change in terms of their um, preparation for matches and um, we're looking forward to seeing them play on Saturday. And pleasing for you to have your, your coaching staff with you as well. Yeah, most certainly so. Um, I think Tomo's a, a very, very good coach. Um, I've got a lot of trust in him in, in terms of his coaching and the tactical help that he gives on the sidelines. And obviously Lee Harrison's got a, a long history here already. Um, everyone knows what a good goalie coach is, but not, not only that, he's one of the best people you're ever likely to meet. And he's, um, he's very good as well in terms of the team set up and you know, his knowledge of football in general and the amount of contacts he has, has and um, the amount of experience he has, he's, he's brilliant as well. So you know, bringing them into a, what we already know is a successful staff and, and a great staff, um, we hope that we can, we can add to that. And what will be your message to, to fans who are obviously so pleased to, to have you back? 
Yeah, just to say thank you for the welcome. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just my message to them is that I'm, I'm here to try and do the best I possibly can. I'll work every minute it takes to, to try and be successful. Um, but thank you for their welcome, and, and we look forward to seeing them um, at Shrewsbury on Saturday and then at Adams Park next week in Exeter. Pleasure to speak to the new manager, and you'll be hearing more from him on future editions of this show, of course. Also at the training ground, we spoke to goalkeeper Max Strieck to find out a little more uh, about uh, what's been going on from a player's eye view over the last few days. Uh, but also the uh, lack of goals he's been conceding of late. All the team is doing really well, and uh, I think we conceded like three goals in last in this year, maybe or maybe more. I can't remember. But yeah, it's been amazing. We we defended really well. Uh, we kept four clean sheets in the last five games. So yeah, everything is going well. And so pleasing for you personally, how you settled into the team. Well, I'm I'm just happy, and obviously like Gareth and uh, Double made like a family here and obviously the momentum goes now and then the lads are amazing the club is really good for me and then yeah I just tried my best to do well for the club and for myself and do you think of it as an extra challenge with say big teams like Bolton and Derby and so pleasing for yourself that you've been able to to keep them from scoring uh, well you know uh, obviously the budgets in inside League One there are so massive difference especially when you've got so many teams who were like in the Premier League like a few years back and then obviously it's really pleasing that we can go out and perform with the, the best and we actually can win against them as well. So I'm just happy that we can win some points from, from the big, big dogs as well. And does it feel like there's a real kind of momentum now? You've got these five games, winning games and you know, it's the second half of the season where the manager said you know, things will start coming good in the second half of the yeah. season. I think obviously our goal is to get to playoffs and we, we are in a good position to achieve that and then we still got 15 games left and then you know it's 45 points to take so anyone can be in them at this moment in time i think some people from the top might slip and we just have to keep going and believe that we can achieve them and then win as many games as possible and then hopefully we will be there and from the a player's point of view what, what's the last few days been like oh uh you know what it's uh so it happens so quickly so it's really dynamic situation and uh, we've seen I, I, I heard about interest that Gaffa will be leaving on Sunday then on Monday I was pretty sure he was leaving and then I asked him will I see you tomorrow he was like yeah yeah hopefully see you tomorrow and then I was like yeah he's gone but then obviously I never t- told him that and then I was chin- sitting with my girlfriend in one of the restaurants and then I said like oh, I think Gaffa is going she was like, why, why would he do that? And I was like, yeah, he's obviously going to QPR, which is, he played for seven years. And then it's a massive step up for him as well and double. And then I was like, at some, some point I was gutted. But on the other side, I want him to do well there. And then obviously it's massive improvement for him. And, you know, you can't take away what he did for the club. And he achieved a lot with this club, you know, for for over 130 years history of the club I think he was the best manager I would say and then obviously achieved championship and then playoff spots so you can't take it away from Dobo and uh, Gareth and then obviously now starting a new chapter uh, so hopefully Blum well, Gaffa now not Blum <laughs> uh, yeah ho- hopefully we, we can build up and take the momentum again for, for the club and then hopefully we achieve everything with our new manager does it feel like a real sort of continuation of, of what you've been doing uh, it's a tricky question for me because obviously we know each other everyone knows each other and then um, I think it seems like continuation but at this stage I think there's lots of doubts as well and we're going out on Saturday to, to you know to show that we are still in a good good uh, team spirit we, we've got good family here and hopefully we can get the results going for, for our new manager and for all the club. All the best to Max and the rest of the team for Saturday against Shrewsbury. I can certainly recommend Polish Donuts, although it turns out he's not so keen. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. Final part of the Wickham Wanderers show. If you're a regular listener to the programme, uh, thank you. Uh, a mention that I meant to, uh, uh, to to talk about a little earlier on is that, of course, uh, not only we have uh, an ex-player on the show, uh, you've heard from a couple. 
um, both former midfielders as well. Uh, this week, uh, we'll uh, GCB chatting to Martin Taylor uh, next week. We're looking forward to uh, having him on, of course, uh, after uh, what he achieved uh, during his time in goal at the club. Uh, more on that next week. But first, we turn our attention to Wickham Wanderers women who on Sunday progressed to the semi-finals of the League Cup. Uh, they haven't got too many uh, league games left. Uh, coming up, in fact, on Sunday's their final home league game. We'll hear from Bobby Lynch in a few moments' time to tell us about her first 90 minutes for some time as well and uh, what that game on Sunday is dedicated to. But first, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, hear from King Anderson, who uh, is uh, also a midfielder and got her first goal a couple of weeks ago for the club as well. But uh, first, how she uh, got into football. I've been playing since I was six years old, started in Norway at a team there, and then been playing in second division in Norway now I currently play in third division so every time I go back home I sign for my team and then when off season is off here I go back and play for them yeah so would you say the opportunities for for girls and women's football in Norway is is good compared to here or is it much similar Mm, it's much similar but it's starting to become more and more like people are having more interest and I can really see that it's starting to grow so that's nice. And tell us about your uh, position. Have you have you always played centre midfield? Yeah, I've always played centre midfield as long as I can remember. I think I had, I played some like left wing because I'm left footed. But yeah, I really enjoy playing in centre midfield, like controlling the play, giving out passes and everything. Yeah. It's something which takes a lot of energy. Yeah, it does. Like... Every game, I think I at least run 12 kilometres every every game. So it's a lot of running. But yeah. So how did you come to be playing for Wickham Wanderers Women? Uh, so I started uh, playing for the university here at Brunel. And then Carl actually came and scouted me and asked if I wanted to come and play for his team at the time. So when he came to Wickham, then he asked me if I wanted to come with him. So... And I said yes, because Carl is a great, great coach. And what were your first impressions of uh, arriving at Wickham? It was nice, good facilities, like a really nice uh, group of girls. Everyone is very welcoming in and uh, yeah, just great spirit. Like it, it seems very professional and yeah, just great vibes. And do you find yeah. as well there's a real feeling of togetherness in the squad because, you know, everyone seems like really close and gets on very well? Yeah, and I think it's starting to get better as well. Like we were a new team from this season and I think we didn't have the best start, but now we're like getting to know each other better and yeah, we know how we play. And so, yeah, it's really starting to become really good. Yeah. What would you say are the real strengths of the team? I would say that everyone is very committed and very positive. Like we always go out, we never give up. So like in the league, we've been down a couple of goals a few times, but we still go out and we show that the game is not lost. We still have a chance and we really put in the fight. And you got your first goal a couple of weeks ago. That must have been a really good feeling as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been waiting for that one. But yeah, Carl told me that week, yeah, you're going to score for me today. And then I got the free kick and uh, it just went in. Yeah, so it was an amazing feeling to finally get the goal, yeah. I hope you bought a lottery ticket that day as well. <laughs> no, I, unfortunately I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been such a great feeling though, to have the, the backing of the manager and, you know, to score uh, like that as well. Yeah, and like it was, we really needed it. We played a good game against e- Eastley, but we had a lot of chances, but we just couldn't get it in. And so it was really nice to just do it myself and then just yeah get the win and three points we, were, we really needed that and great to do well in the cup of course as well uh, as you say it's been it's sort of difficult in the in the league but things are starting to pick up now uh, what do you sort of hope to re- achieve in the remainder of the season yeah I hope we could get now we have um, Winchester at home so I hope we can get a win there and get three points and also get through to the semi-final yeah that would be really nice we haven't done so well at home lately so it would be nice to give the supporters something to come and look at and really enjoy enjoy, enjoy your football and, yeah, come and support, yeah. And overall, how, how have you found your, your time at the club so far? Yeah, I've really enjoyed my time. Um, it's starting to get better and I really can see that 
next season is going to be really, really interesting. We're really becoming a team and every everyone around. Uh, yeah, it's a great atmosphere and everyone is very nice, yeah. And does it fit in well with your, with your studies and, and other things that you do as well? Yeah, it, it's okay. Like, I don't feel like I have much time, like spare time. Everything I do is go to uni and then go play football, but that's what I like, so I don't mind doing that. <laughs> so what is it you're studying? I'm studying physiotherapy. Yeah, so I'm on my second year, and so I have one year left, yeah. Oh, fantastic. That, is that something you're looking to go into in a sort of sports way as well? Yeah, that's what that's my plan because I've done, actually I've had uh, a lot of operation. I've done my ACL a couple of times. I think it's six times. And then Ouch. that's kind of how I got into physio. So I find it really interesting. And yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a good person to practice on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I, I know, I know my knees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that, that's, that's really serious. Really, ser- You've done so well to sort of come back from those. Yeah. Great to chat to uh, Kino. Six, oof, talking of uh, knee injuries, uh, making her 90-minute uh, return to the team on Sunday uh, in that game was Bobby Lynch. And as you can imagine, after such a long layoff, uh, she was really pleased to play the whole game. Yeah, it was brilliant to be back. I mean, every other interview I've done, I've been like, I'm injured, I'm injured, I'm injured. So it's nice to finally speak to you guys and not be injured. No, absolutely. And what was it like? Because did it help in a way that you weren't expecting to to play ninety minutes? Um, yeah, definitely. And even at times throughout the game, I um, was not expecting to play ninety minutes. After a couple of long runs and um, being very out of breath, I looked over to the bench and was hoping that my name was next to be called, but um, it never came. <laughs> so I had to see it out. And do you think, like, sort of mentally as well as physically, do, do you think, oh, I have to be a bit careful, or are you, are you so sort of desperate to get playing again, you just sort of go for it and, and just think, oh, I'm back now? I think I'm fairly lucky, actually, in that respect, where once I'm sort of playing football, I can forget about it. But I know that's not the same for everyone. And, you know, like, the psych- psychological side of it is actually sometimes the hardest part. And I know a couple of other players who have been in that situation, where, for me, I think once I'm sort of back on the pitch... I just completely forget and luckily I don't have to worry too much throughout the game so I can think about other things and focus on the game. Um, but it definitely is a side of it which is probably not discussed enough, the psychological like sort of mental side of it, for sure. And also I'd seen that you posted it's been over 500 days since... since, 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 since <laughs> yeah. It's almost a biblical amount of time. Yeah, so it's 518 days since the injury itself happened. So... That's how long, really, yeah, the, the rehab has sort of been, which is a long time to be injured, but it was due to, like, waiting times in between for for appointments and stuff like that. I think when Nick Freeman did his, it was he was out for about a year, and a, a year, I think, on the dot almost. So I wasn't that far behind, I suppose. <laughs> but, no, it was, um, it was due to the waiting time. But it also helped me put quite a lot of work into my rehab and, and come back really stronger than I probably would have if I didn't have those waiting times. So it does have its perks. And has it been nice in a way that you've, you've had a kind of uh, still a part to play, you know, especially with the coaching and the social media side and still being involved, really? Um, yeah, it's been like, it, well, it's been everything at times because, you know, it's, I've been part of the team, part of a team since I was, you know, a early teens. So to not be in a team at all was a really difficult side of it. But actually staying involved with the girls and, being involved in the game still as much as possible sort of really helped me with the psychological and like sort of mental side of the injury, I suppose, which is obviously a godsend when uh, you put your whole life really into football. You know, it was nice to, to still be involved in the football as much as I could be. It must be so nice as well to be able to play a part now that you've seen kind of the, the changes at the, at the club as well in recent times and now kind of, you know, actually get on the grass and, 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 and play a part as well. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time coming. I've been watching and watching and watching. And, you know, so at, sometimes when the season's not been going as, you know, as we wanted it to, it's been so frustrating, like not being able to impact um, in the game itself on a personal level. So to now, like, be involved in the actual game and, and help us get that 1 0 win uh, in the quarterfinals of the Cup was, you know, just amazing. And people might not even realise that it's such a short season for you. So it's, it's so nice to you know, have this, this kind of last couple of games. It's your, your penultimate league game coming up. And as you say, you're doing so well. You've got a, a cup semi-final to look forward to. Um, yeah, so it's, it is a really short season. I mean, it's crazy to think that Sunday is our last home league game of the season. And we're only at the end of February. 
So it is a very short season. But I did say at the beginning of the season for the girls to get me to a couple of cup finals so I could cameo. And they've done it. So <laughs> perfect. I've come in a bit early. But um, yeah, to be into the semi-final now is a perfect way to end the season, really. And a final opportunity for, for fans to come and support you at Burnham in the league as well. And, and also a very special day and game as well. Uh, yeah. So it is, uh, you know, we lovely to get a good crowd down there. Um, not only for ourselves, but for our uh, partnership with the Football v Homophobia, which uh, we've dedicated our game to as well. With the help of Winchester, who we're playing against, they are fully on board supporting the cause with us, which is really nice. And really goes to show what a great part football can play in in raising awareness of uh, especially this issue. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, within women's football, I suppose it's almost less of an issue than it is in, in men's football, but we want to spread that message that football is for everyone, whether it's within the men's game, within the women's game, because, you know, since um, probably the summer and the success of the, the summer, the girls at any level are like the role models that they should be for the children growing up and for people in all sorts of communities to look up to and aspire to. So it's really nice for us to be able to support, support a cause that is so so open for everyone and something we all really, really believe in. And as you say, really nice for, for youngsters to be able to sort of see what you're doing and, you know, the rest of the team as well and, and get the impression that, you know, it's such an inclusive club and, and so welcoming. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think um, if anyone's been down to Burnham, they'll see that it's, you know, a really nice environment. There's always the girls on the sideline if they're not in the squad and, and everyone's supporting everyone and, you know, all our three squads support each other when, as, when we can, you know, when fixtures allow. And it is a really nice environment and a really nice club to be part of, whether that's as a player, a fan. So, you know, you can, seeing it and um, trying to, and getting involved with it is, is really nice um, for everyone. And obviously all about educating people that, you know, no matter what your, your sexual orientation, it, it makes no difference if, if you're playing football or even watching football. Yeah, and I think that's the sort of message we wanted to spread, that not only are we, uh, you know, saying this is be homophobic, it's, you know, we just want to allow everybody to come down and be part of football who regardless of anything you can you can be whoever you want to be and be involved in in football and I think that's a really important message to spread it for us it's not just about the homophobia it's about just being an inclusive environment for everyone which is something you know we we try to achieve regardless of whether it's uh the uh awareness month or not so you know it is a very important message all through the season it's just we've chosen this game to highlight it and do you feel, I'm sure you're much too modest to say, but yourself and, and the rest of the team, a real kind of sense of pride in that, you know, youngsters, especially young girls, are kind of looking up to you and, uh, and, and the way that you're promoting this cause especially, but also, you know, women's football? Yeah, I think it's, um, it always feels a bit weird, doesn't it, when, uh, like you're not, when, when you're not used to it, I suppose. We've had a couple of, you know, young Wickham fans come down to the ground and, and the girls still get a bit shy when they have to sign an autograph or take a picture with someone. Uh, but they're learning and they're learning to love it. And we take it all on board and we love it. And we would love to get more people down to support us and to see what we're all about and meet the girls and, yeah, just learn a, learn a bit more about us. And have you noticed in your time at the club in a real sort of, uh, sort of evolution uh, of the club also, but also, you know, the interest in, in, in the football of the, of the women's section, if you like? Yeah, definitely. I mean, even like going down to the ground on a Saturday, the girls, we go together. Some of us go more than others, and we'll go and sit in the in the stadium. And people come up to us now, and they recognise us. Or we see them at the game on the Saturday, and then I see them in the crowd on the Sunday. And you know, it's lovely. Like we see loads of the fans down at Burnham, and it's just it's so nice to know that there are fans that are coming out and they support the club and, and the whole club, not just the men's side. So, what do you hope that supporters take away from the the football v homophobia occasion, if you like? I think that just like we've been saying that football is an is an environment for everyone and that's regardless of of anything any sexual orientation background gender you know any, anything we we can and that is an environment where you can come down and you can be yourself and you'll be supported to do so and i think that's a really important message to spread that we we'll do that every week every weekend that you come down and support us Bobby Lynch from Wickham Wanderers Women speaking to us here at Wickham Sound to do back the chair girls at Burnham on Sunday. And if you're not going to rural Shrewsbury, you can catch the whole game live here on 106.6 FM and on Wanderers TV.